module looks at alcohol and its effects on your driving. Most people are familiar with the long-standing and clear safety messages that have urged us not to drink and drive. However, each year there are more than 80,000 failed breath tests, meaning that some people are choosing to take a chance by driving after consuming alcohol. Of these failed tests, between 15 and 20% are from people who get behind the wheel the morning after drinking alcohol. Now, even though you may never drink alcohol or may avoid it if driving, we hope this will be a useful module with information you'll be able to share with friends and family. When you've completed this module, you will have refreshed your understanding of how alcohol affects your ability to drive safely, how it's impossible to know just how much alcohol anyone can drink and remain under the legal limit, how the only safe option is not to drive if you've been drinking alcohol and not to drink alcohol if you need to drive. All of this is designed to help you be safer on your road journeys. So, in this presentation, we're taking a look at what effects alcohol has on the body. We'll not attempt to offer great depth or detail. Our aim is to provide a few facts we hope will help you make sensible decisions, or perhaps help colleagues or family members make sensible decisions. We should, of course, stress that the only viable choice is not to drive if you've had a drink or may otherwise be impaired. And if you need to drive, then just take soft drinks. Let's look first of all at alcohol. It's absorbed into your system through your stomach and small intestine. It only takes a few minutes for it to reach your heart, brain, muscles and other tissues via your bloodstream. There are various factors affecting how much alcohol will be in your blood. For example, if you're female, you will typically not be able to drink as much as if you're male. That's not sexist, by the way. It's simple science because women naturally have less of the enzyme that breaks down alcohol. If you've been eating, the process of alcohol absorption into your body will be slower, but it will still happen. It will just take longer. If you're dehydrated, then alcohol will have a greater effect on you. Also, if you're fatigued, you're likely to be more significantly impaired by much smaller amounts of alcohol. You're sure to have heard of the measurement of units. There are various recommendations on maximum units of alcohol per week. The definition of a unit in the UK is eight grams of pure alcohol. But the notion that one drink equals one unit is untrue. So counting the glasses you've had at the pub, at a party or at home is not a reliable indicator of how much alcohol you've consumed. A large glass of red wine, for example, represents far more than one unit. You need the percentage of alcohol and the amount of drink consumed in order to establish the number of units. This glass of wine has an alcohol percentage of 13, and it's a large glass, 250 mils, or the equivalent of a third of a bottle. By multiplying, we get 3,250, and by dividing by 1,000, we get 3.25. So that's the number of units in this glass of wine. Similarly, a bottle of lager like this one has 330 mils and the alcohol by volume is 5.2 percent. So 330 times 5.2 gives us 1700, divide by 1000, and you get 1.7 units of alcohol. A pub standard single measure of gin or whiskey represents one unit. That's what you will get from a drink in the pub. But it's much harder to know what you're drinking when it's at home, at yours or someone else's home. So let's make a home-style gin and tonic. Get a glass up here. And let's put 50 mils of gin into this glass. So that's one and two. 50 mils of gin, we better get some tonic. 47% alcohol by volume in the gin, so 50 times 47, 2,350, divide by 1,000, and that gives you 2.35 units of alcohol in that drink. It's worth bearing in mind that your body can't store alcohol, so your liver gets to work expelling it from your system straight away. It will achieve this at a rate of around one unit per hour, and there's no way you can speed up that process. Let's use this as an opportunity to lay to rest a few untruths. Coffee sobers you up, it doesn't. You may feel more alert, as coffee is a stimulant and alcohol is a depressant, but you'll still have the same amount of alcohol in your system, however much coffee you drink. Eating a heavy meal means you won't be drunk. OK, food doesn't prevent alcohol from being absorbed. It can slow down the process, but you will still have the alcohol in your system. A good night's sleep will sort you out. 
not necessarily. Remember, your body gets rid of alcohol at the rate of around one unit per hour, and there's nothing you can do to speed up that process. This module is not about telling you what you can and can't drink or suggesting that you shouldn't have a good evening with friends or colleagues. What we are saying is that alcohol, even small amounts, will impair your judgment. Impairment starts with your very first drink, so do your planning early. Decide where you can safely leave your car, book taxis or agree that you'll stay on soft drinks this time. Plan your diary carefully for the next day because alcohol takes its time to leave our systems and as we've said, there's nothing any of us can do to speed up the process. It's worth reminding ourselves of the consequences for a driver of failing a breath test. There's a mandatory 12-month ban plus most likely a hefty fine. But the longer-term impact on earnings can be severe if you factor in the stigma of a criminal record. Research published early in 2013 by the Institute of Advanced Motorists estimated that a drink-drive conviction costs the average motorist nearly £50,000 when all the immediate costs, such as the fine and the taxi fares, and the longer-term consequences, such as vastly increased insurance premium and possible loss of employment, are taken into account. Big zero there, which is good. But fines aside, the consequences of causing a crash through drinking and driving are far worse. You could kill or seriously injure yourself. You could also kill or injure another driver or a pedestrian who happens to be in your way. And that's likely to carry a hefty prison sentence. Here are our top points to remember from this module. Impairment begins with your first alcoholic drink. There is no way of sobering up quickly. If you've been drinking, you must allow enough time to pass to ensure you no longer have alcohol in your system. One drink does not equal one unit. As we've seen, some single drinks can contain three or more units. A drink drive conviction means a lot more than a fine and a ban. There's a criminal record plus an array of serious longer term consequences and costs. Drink driving is still a serious problem. Figures show that 30 people in the UK are killed or seriously injured every week in drink drive accidents. That's why across Europe it's recognised as one of the top three killers on the road. So don't take a risk with alcohol. If you're going to plan to drink, don't drive. If you're planning a lot to drink, make sure you don't need to drive the following morning. And if you do need to drive, then don't drink alcohol. If you have any concerns, please speak to your manager or your safety representative.